Welcome back, Chappelle. Welcome back to it. Welcome back to your flip classroom and our continuing discussion of the rise of the Macedonians following the Peloponnesian War, right? So the big thing that we left off in class talking about is the rise of Macedonia underneath King Philip II, the father of the young Alexander the Great, right? Now remember, B period, or not B period, C period. I told y'all that real, real quick if you wanted to. I talked about all this stuff and this stuff when y'all were getting packed up and things like that. We are moving around a little bit. Do me a favor. Go ahead and hit pause real quick and get the rest of this stuff down. Add any little extra notes you might need, right? But we did talk about a lot in class. Wait, pause. Got it. All right, so now look. So big thing about it, though, is we did talk about in class is how Philip II is going to reform the Macedonian army to be a more advanced style Greek army with different units of the cavalry and the archers and longer spears and stuff like that. And he will win battle after battle after battle. He loses his eyeball to an arrow and stuff like that, which is really, really bad. And he takes over Athens. And then also the one place he didn't take over, Sparta, because nobody wants to fight Sparta. They're big and scary. And there's Sparta. <laughs> Wait, now look. So also, though, he did all this stuff with his young, young son at his side, right? A man by the name of Aristotle, or not man, man by the name of Aristotle, man by the name of Alexander. And at the time, he was Alexander III, who was tutored by like Aristotle his entire life. And we talked about the famous story of him taming his horse, Bucephalus. Yeah, Bucephalus, by the way, apparently means ox head, because apparently Bucephalus was a really, really big black horse that he tamed. Because remember, he was afraid of his shadow and stuff like that, but he had a big white thing on the front of his head and it looked like an ox and stuff like that. So the thing about it though that we need to understand is who's going to be next. If Philip II is going to manage to take over all that different territory in ancient Greece and do all this different stuff by the time Alexander turns 18, because when Alexander turned 18 years old, Philip had already officially conquered all of Greece. So what next? Who are you going to take over now, big fella? Alexander is now a like spry young man. He's 18 years old. He can ride a horse. He can fight in battles. What are we going to do? All right. Well, the big thing we're going to do is they planned to conquer the real enemy of the Greeks together. They wanted to set out together on a massive voyage side by side and take over Persia, right? Because if you can take over Persia, you've basically taken over most of the known world to the Greeks, right? As far as the Greeks know, they are there. There's some unlike inhabited land to their west, maybe a couple of small settlements and stuff like that, but Persia is massive. And if you can take them over, you can take over anybody, right? And you will have taken over the known world at the time. Because Persia, as we looked at our map in the Persian Wars, expanded over ancient Iraq, Iran, into Egypt, and all through northern Africa. But the problem was, is while they were recruiting their military to go strike out and take over Persia, two years later, Philip the Se excuse me, Philip the Second will be assassinated at his daughter's wedding. That's right, Philip II was assassinated and stabbed to death by one of his own bodyguards at his daughter's wedding. When a crazy, crazy story that involves a bunch of other shenanigans. But what ends up happening, though, is he gets killed, and so now Alexander rises to the throne, right? So Alexander the Great, and well, Alexander the Third at the time, would rise to the throne after crushing a rebellion or two, but he wanted to pick up where his father left off. He wanted to strike out, and he wanted to take over Persia. And he sent letters and different kinds of like, like documents after he crushed a couple of rebellions to put himself as the king of the Macedonians and the king of all Greece. And he actually like sends a letter to the Persian king, Darius III, who's sitting right there in this picture. And here is Alexander over here on this side. He sends him a letter and says, I will allow you to surrender now before we take you over. And then Darius III laughed in Alexander's face, laughed at him and said, ha, 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 do you see how big my empire is? I will crush you, you impetuous little boy, right? And so Alexander took a massive amount of offense to that. And Alexander decides to conquest all of Persia, right? And Alexander chased after Darius. Darius would actually go into the battles and invite his family, his wife and kids, to come along and watch and be like, watch me as I go ahead and crush this Greek turd boy named Alexander. He can't beat me in a fight, blah, 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 blah. And then at some of the earliest battles, Alexander crushes Darius's armies, and Darius goes in retreat. So all these battles, as you can see, is literally him chasing Darius throughout the rest of the entire empire. But he actually ends up catching him right out here towards Persepolis. Now, the thing about it that does end up happening, oh wait, no, Persepolis is right down there. So the big thing that ends up happening, though, is there's a lot of famous stories about Alexander in this moment, okay? And during this entire thing, Alexander was a great general. Apparently, he fought in battle with his men. He was considered a phenomenal military leader, and these men would follow him into death no matter what. And they never stopped, and they never thought twice about it. Because Alexander would ride his horse, Bucephalus, into any battle that came upon him, and some historians say that he fought in over 300 battles, and he never 
lost once, right? Even one time when they were stranded in Egypt and his military was dying of thirst. They were outside of Cairo and they were dying of thirst. And all the men were like, oh my God, what's going to happen? We're all going to die out here because we can't get out of this desert and stuff like that. And apparently what had happened is all the men went from canteen to canteen in the military and filled a helmet full of water. And they handed it to Alexander and they were like, sir, we will all continue to live through you as long as you stay alive. So please, sir, Alexander, take this water and drink of it because we do not want to be dead for no reason. Carry our names with you. And Alexander takes the helmet and he pours the water out into the sand and he throws it and he says, if you don't drink, I don't drink. And these dudes are so inspired by that. They're like, I will die for you. And they just go off and take over all of Egypt. It's absolutely ridiculous. And he actually even chases down Darius into Persepolis, where he's already apparently dead, right? Literally, Darius is already dead in Persepolis, but he actually killed the guy that killed him first because Alexander wanted the honor of killing Darius III, right? But what ends up happening, though, too, is he then went into India and fought many other battles, some of them against even guys that were on war elephants, and he never lost once. But at a very, very famous battle out here in India, out towards back, like this area of India right here, Bucephalus died. He actually was killed in a battle. We're not sure why, if he died of old age or if he actually was killed from his wounds and stuff like that. But on that place, he named a city after his horse called Bucephala. And all the other cities he named after himself it was like Alexander Town, Alexandria, Alexandretta. And they would like name all these cities after himself. But he named one place after Bucephalus when he died. But before setting out again, after Bucephalus has already died and he's taken over all this land, Alexander actually unexpectedly caught a fever and he died. And apparently, according to the way the story works out, is he was buried in a coffin full of honey. And we don't know where he is to this day because they might have killed all the guys that actually buried the body so no one would ever find him. And when he died, he apparently uttered the last words that were like, Alexander, Alexander, who should we leave the empire to? And he just let out one big sigh and said, Leave it to the best. Ugh. And he died, right? And he, then it, literally what happens is his three prominent generals split the empire up. But over the next 300 years, the Hellenistic Empire would revolve forward, right? And keep pushing forward. And the years the empire, though, over time, would fall apart for men battling for control. Because only Alexander could lead it perfectly, right? But over the next three years, these three gr different groups would start going to war with each other to see who could rule over the empire in totality. But during those 300 years, that is the period known as the Hellenistic period, right? The Hellenistic period is a time of great leaps forward in science, mathematics, art, because what you're going to see is a culturally diffused empire of Greek, Egyptian, Persian, and Indian traits because of all the land that Alexander had taken over. So what you're going to see as well is they're going to make the capital city of this massive empire, Alexandria, Egypt. And it perfectly represents the cultural diffusion of all these places together because you could find anything you wanted in this capital city of over a million people from Greek marble to Arabic spices, right? And you could literally even find like you know, like Egyptian things because that is a Greek man inside the and that has been mummified in ancient Egypt so we can see the cultures fusing together, right? Women in this entire area were even rever revered as poets and philosophers and the last ruler of the Hellenistic Empire was even a woman herself. And you know of her. She's very, very famous. Her name was Cleopatra, right? Cleopatra was the last ruler of the Hellenistic Empire. Science, art, mathematics, and other fields of academics are going to leap forward. But the best example of the Hellenistic period and its massive amounts of intelligence that came out is none other than the inventor known as Archimedes, right? And Archimedes was one of the last thinkers of the Hellenistic Empire before it was eventually conquered by the Romans, all right? Go ahead and write that down, conquered eventually by the Romans, right? Because the Romans are going to be very, very important a little bit later on, and that's our next unit, right? But the best example is this guy known as Archimedes, who was the math mathematician, scientist, developer, and genius of the Hellenistic period. My man invented anything you could possibly think of. He said, give me enough pulleys and I will raise boats from the water with one man, right? And he actually proved it and actually set up a system of pulleys and raised a boat out of the water, right? He actually came up with theories on densities when he's in the bathtub and stuff like that. That's a famous story I'll talk about in class. He developed a heat ray that could set boats on fire from the like, actual harbors of Alexandria. And he even also eventually died one day doing math, right? When Alexandria was eventually like actually taken over by the Romans, apparently a Roman soldier came upon him when he was working with a compass and trying to figure out the circumference of that circle and the area of a circle. And literally the Roman soldier went to stab him and Archimedes held him up and said, no, 
don't disturb my circles, right? And so, and eventually, though, he was stabbed to death and thrown from a balcony. But the Hellenistic period is a great period of golden age time period where math, science, art, and women's rights leapt forward. But that's where I'm going to leave you. Y'all have a good one. Study for that test. See y'all later.